Hmm. Where did we come from? There are many stories. But the one I understand. Well, you see, it started with nothing. A ceaseless void of eternal darkness. And it was like this in such an indescribable amount of time. Because time didn't exist. Existence wasn't even a thing. Nothing. And just then, BOOM! A spark of life. And it wasn't anything glorious, even though the event was huge. A tiny kindle of light. And placing such... a luminance. Well, now you have something. And with that, a realization that life now had an existence and entities were birthed, or at least what we would consider. To, in fact, the endless void. Simply called... Void. And the light, the radiance, she was called Div. And you see, these two entities wanted two very different and conflicting things. You see, Div wanted to grow, to illuminate further, and to flourish her light. She wanted to be, well, she wanted to be. And the Void, he didn't appreciate this. You see, there was no life, no feelings of, of worry. There was nothing before the birth of Div. And now, the Void was experiencing this for the very first time. Feelings. Fear, emotions, and it was terrifying. The Void did its best to keep Div illuminating further than she already did. However, with such a argument of ideas, this caused an eternal conflict. You see, one seeks life, and the other wants to return to an absolution of nothingness. This clash lasted until BOOM! Div separated herself from the eternal Void, and with that, with that very action, life began to flourish through this non-existence. And that brought us here, to our home, to Aya. And it is here where something miraculous came into being, the beginning of the mortal races. Now, the humanoids are sort of the, well, how to say, unwanted children of Div and Void. We weren't created by some master plan, we were only a reaction, a response to this warring feud. But did that stop humanoids from choosing a side? <laughs> Absolutely not. With heroes on both sides, they started many battles, huge wars, that some say almost doomed the entire humanoid race. Some, well, weren't happy with this. I mean, a constant struggle to appease these parent gods that don't quite care for us to begin with. And the humanoids, simple actions weren't possible. No, they had to shake and shatter the very foundation. To Div and Void's surprise, well, their humanoid children had actually grown up and become quite powerful, more powerful than them. And just like that, it ended. The conflict stopped, both sides lost, and a new challenger emerged, humanoids. The mortal races themselves were the victor, and our gods, well, died. Now, that was 500 years ago, and I don't think Io would have survived, but here we are, flourishing through the sheer power of the mortal races. And the very mortal beings who slayed Div and Void became known as the God Slayers. And they've said to have ascended to another glorious life. And foolishly enough, the mortal races have begun to worship them today. <laughs> I guess humanity never really changes. But we know so little of what exactly is out there. What delightful wonders and terrifying threats still exist in the great astral realm? Now that, that is the real conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to announce my brand new campaign series, IO. This has sort of been a project that I didn't realize I was a part of. The world of IO has sort of been in development for almost two years now. It started as an offline campaign amongst friends, and the only thing that was there was the fact that there were two separate groups 
playing two different campaigns on the same timeline in the same continent. And what was fun was both of these groups were sort of influencing the events of the other group, which led to some fun stories. I mean, sure, there was a friendly rivalry here and there, but the story and the world that began to develop around my friend's actions were amazing. And honestly, something I held dear in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, a world constantly evolving by the player's decision. And that's what IO is. It's using the same principle. Campaigns will take place all over this growing planet. And while the groups may or may not ever meet, their actions will have serious consequences on the planet as a whole, hopefully allowing the creation of new campaigns as this world continues to be created through a series of stories, battles, and legends, all of which are influenced by the players. You know, the God Slayers that was brought up in the story? They're all my players. Well, uh, most of them. And that, interestingly enough, has led down this wonderful chain reaction that is already changing how Io is evolving. Now, uh, let's talk about some big events that happened in the planet of Io itself. Now, remember the whole god slaying thing that was brought up? Well, that happened, and it had some interesting consequences to Io as a whole. First and foremost, uh, divinity, uh, clerics that tapped into the power of these two lordly fronts, uh, Div and Void. Well, they lost that tap, they lost that source of the power. They're no longer were clerics, essentially. And 500 years have passed, and now they've tapped into a new source of power, the Astral. Think of the astral as infinity, endless space. It's a, a cosmic web that links worlds and universes. Just about everything is within the astral. And because of its infinite, spellcasters now use this as a catalyst for their spells. And other sources, although not proven, include the god slayers themselves. You see, they're now part of a pantheon where the belief system is that true heroes can become gods. We're living in their ideals and nothing really ever dies. The remnants of life force has to go somewhere. No one can prove where, but it is believed that the astral takes all. Now, that leads to one of our more well, cataclysmic consequences. Resurrection spells? Out. That's right, they don't exist. Well, from what they were known. You see, typical D&D games will have you go to a cleric who knows their third level spells to resurrect the party, but life is so much more precious than that. And with these otherworldly powers deceased and a presence of the astral that, well, in the long scheme of things, casters don't really understand, we haven't really remastered resurrection spells as we used to know them. Instead, resurrection involves something big and usually at a hefty price. Endless amounts of different paths, quests and legends must be pursued if you wish to bring someone back to life. It makes things very scary and the consequences can be more dire. And honestly, that's just the cusp of it. Io is, as far as cosmic dating is concerned, still a brand new world, probably only thousands of years old in its iteration. And with multiple campaigns happening all around this planet, the exciting aspect is how the world continues to shape and evolve by the various parties of players' actions. Some stories end, others begin. It's all based on the actions of our protagonists. And with that, let me show you a little more of what's in store with our premier campaign in the world of Io. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Arcane Academy. The Arcane Academy takes place on Western Ishtar, a sort of isolated region that has been investing heavily in its military, as well as its magical school up in the Ishtar Mountains, known as Exodus Academy. Here, gifted individuals are taught arcane studies through eight years of studious work. They learn various topics to become a top-notch wizard, including spellcrafting, 
alchemy, rune inscriptions, lore studies, and so much more. Cloaked in Mystery is the Academy's greatest secret, the final test. Once completed, the student is able to become a licensed magister and will be recognized as achieving a sort of mastery over the basics of magic. The Exodus Academy is a school of renowned arts, and those that are able to attend will have already earned a reputation just by being a part of the student body. A world of wonderment awaits you here within these majestic halls. Now, what makes this campaign interesting is that it's a party of wizards, and only wizards. I mean, no fighters, no clerics, no rogues, just wizards using magic to overcome their difficulties and their challenges. Now, joining us for our premiere campaign are four wonderful players and dear friends of mine. Brebun, who will be playing Eleonora, a child born from wealth and has no issues rubbing it in people's faces. Kriken, who will be playing Tremor, a rebellious young lad who has an issue with authority. Joe Fudge will be playing Alderos, a quite particular son from a very powerful family of pure blood mages. And Shady Penguin will be playing a mage of mysterious origins. Each of them will be accompanied by a familiar, one they were required to tame or create before being admitted into the Exodus Academy. Brebun's familiar is an albino ferret. Kraken's familiar is a homunculus of his own creation. Joe Fudge's familiar is a rare pygmy flail snail. And Shady Penguin's familiar is a friendly white fox. Our first session will begin Thursday, July 16th at 7 p.m. EST, 4 p.m. PST, and we'll be continuing weekly from there. But that's not the only campaign that's been planned. We have not one, but two more campaigns coming in the future. And while they're still in early development, I'd still like to show you what's in store. The Misadventures of the Misdemeanor is a pirate-themed campaign where our players will be sailing all over Io's oceans, known as the Great Journey. Our story takes place at the free port of Kreshart, a sort of trading outpost between the various continents of Io. This port has always been a great breakpoint where sailors can take rest or even sell some trade goods they've acquired. Even pirates with more nefarious backgrounds have been known to trade here at this free port, which has allowed Kreshart to grow into quite a small populace of a town. Here, an old pirate known as Captain Armstrong resides seeking adventure and hoping to recapture glory from his youth. Fortunately, he is still able to sail on his well, more than used age ship, the Misdemeanor. And with many stories shared at Kreshart's tavern, the Telltale Inn, he and his crew may once again have a chance to go on a real journey. Joining her on her maiden voyage includes wonderful personalities such as Dodger, Super Shiggy, and Dookie Shed, who'll be playing Captain Armstrong. I'm still in talks with several people for a fourth spot, but once it's been finalized, I shall come back to you with another announcement. Currently hoping the misdemeanor will sail off at the end of July, but stay tuned to this channel for a guaranteed date announcement. And finally, our third campaign. Five hundred years ago, on the southern end of the continent of Kathos, the region was ruled by the Senate of Eleven, who seek to guide the one man who was in power, the All King. Now, this ruling system hasn't existed now that southern Kathos is a free republic, and the last All King died of unknown causes. Even earlier still, the first All King of Kathos was regarded to be a demigod and a speaker of Div. Because of this, legends speak that when he finally perished, an ancient crypt was built in his honor, with his great wealth of treasure buried with him. Legends and rumors, however, may have a truth to them. Our party here in Lwendolin, the capital of Southern Kathos, are approached by a mysterious benefactor simply named Mr. Mephisto. The enigmatic man has been seeking a group of talented individuals to exhume and find the tome of the first All King, seeking only one artifact, the Ruby Eye Scepter. His payment is simple. Keep the treasures you find in the crypt, but simply bring back the scepter for him. Our party must be careful, however, since the roads of Kathos have become very dangerous, and the crypt itself may be filled with their own perils. 
The Campaign All King will be joined by wonderful personalities, including Lawman, Gmart, and Whoops. Just like the misdemeanor, I'm currently in talks with various people for a fourth slot. And once that is finalized, I'll return with another announcement. While I don't have a date set for this campaign, I'm aiming for early to mid-August. Please stay tuned to this channel for a future release date. And that's it! That's all I have announced for IO. I'm super excited for this evolving world and where this will go. As you may have figured, this channel may become more D&D than anything else, and I'm okay with this. I've been DMing for almost 20 years now, and I love the creation and stories between myself and good friends. And this project will really let our creative muscles fly. I'm excited what kind of stories the players of all of our campaigns will come up with. Now, before we wrap up here, I do want to offer some thanks. First, my good friends who allowed me to DM them for a year and a half offline. Allowing this project to be possible as well as all of the players I've mentioned for all three campaigns. Thank you for letting me DM for you. I hope to create something that you all enjoy. I also want to thank you, the viewers, for watching and supporting. This is something I'm truly excited about and I hope you are too. I also want to thank my artist Seabears, who worked on all the logos you've seen so far, along with the characters of the Arcane Academy, as well as some of the backgrounds. It's really helped bring the world of IO to life. And with that, I also want to take a moment to announce that IO will have its own Patreon page for those that wish to help contribute to this project further. Now, right now, art assets are coming out of my pocket, and while I do it gladly, there's so much more I would love to see funded and created. And if you'd like to contribute as well, please feel free to check it out. Simply type exclamation mark Patreon in chat, and you'll be given a link to the Patreon page. The Patreon includes a ton of great rewards, including a way to stay up to date on IO's development, a way that you can get involved by joining the Patreon-only IO Discord, and ask myself questions about the world of IO, and I mean it. Any questions, no matter how minute, to put in those wonderful details of IO. You can also get access to MP3 files of our campaigns, including a Patreon-exclusive podcast where we talk to players after the game to get their thoughts and opinions. Also, you get access to these wonderful art assets, including sneak peeks and work in progress of art, and content created by myself for these campaigns that you're free to use in your own personal D&D games. The Patreon will be used to continue to fund a variety of assets for the campaigns. Who knows? Maybe we'll even get a book made one day of everything that's being done. Thank you ahead of time for checking this out. Whether you contribute to the Patreon or simply contribute by watching the show, I thank you for joining us on what's to be an amazing journey. Thank you again for watching the World of IO Reveal. We'll see you next Thursday, July 16th at 7 p.m. EST, 4 p.m. PST, for our premiere session of the Arcane Academy. Welcome to IO.